Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have another radio to show you. Now this time it's the Zastone D500, which retails for around $150. However, I'll provide a coupon code in the video description so you can actually get it a little cheaper if you find yourself wanting to buy one. Now this radio is super small. Well, the body is, and it has a detachable head unit. It's rated up to 25 watts, and covers the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter handband. Now, when trying to select the 1.25 meter band, it was not possible using the direct dial entry. But the specifications do have that frequency bracketed, which makes me think they quite possibly could be another model. Now, the rear panel consists of an SO239 socket, which is, of course, for the antenna. There's an external fan to keep it cool, and yep, it does actually work. And well, it's not on all the time. It kind of kicks in when the radio gets a bit warm. There's also two 3.5 millimeter sockets on the back. One is for data, which is for programming the radio. And the other is what you would think is just a standard speaker connection. However, this socket is actually a TRS socket, which has four connections, a ground, mic input, speaker output, and a PTT line. So you could use this to interface to an audio interface quite easily. Now the D500 is a no frill radio. It's a basic 270 25 watt mobile transceiver, but it does have a couple of cool features. Across the top of the screen, we see the receive signal meter, and then below this, there's a live microphone level value. It also supports two VFOs, but unfortunately it's not full duplex. The supply voltage is also located down there on the bottom right of the screen. Now the left rotary control is the volume control and that also acts as a push button. The rotary control on the right is the frequency or memory channel change control. And again, this can act as a push button. Now if you tap it once, you'll enter into the menu system where you'll find around 57 different settings that you can change. Now this includes configuring the color of different parts of the display. You can modify the text color for most parts like VFO, signal levels, etc. As you would have seen a moment ago, the D500 has an inbuilt speaker on the top of the radio. However, within the menu, you can actually change the routing of the audio to come out of the head unit instead. Now the microphone can also be plugged into either the main radio unit behind the screen or into the side of the head unit. With the ability to route audio to the head unit and plug the mic into the head unit as well, this makes it super easy to install into a vehicle and mount the main unit away from the cockpit. It wasn't a cheap one either, very expensive one. So uh, I guess their, uh, their auditor was going back through some records or something and found it and then they turned it in as a dispute. So what do you think it is? The gnomes going out there, placing them in the yard at night? <laughs> so that they'll grow. Uh, it's amazing. It's just kind of like a weed. A weed will pop up and grow six feet in no time. You know the, the power connector that comes with the D500 radio already has a vehicle accessory plug on the end of it. So this also makes it super easy to install in your vehicle or remove it. Now, incidentally, I recently got this new power supply, and I got it from Banggood. It's rated up to 50 amps using the rear DC output connectors and up to 10 amps using that front vehicle adapter socket. And yep, I know it's proper overkill for this radio, but I needed another new power supply that I could use just for testing radios. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out. Now the microphone that comes with the radio is backlit, although it doesn't look very evenly backlit in this clip, and that's mostly down to the studio lights that I'm using but it's perfectly usable when you're in a dark environment. You can also completely control the radio from this microphone. This includes accessing the menu, changing VFOs, changing power level, and also direct dialing of frequency. Removing the head unit is also quite easy. There's just one push clip on the right side behind the display. Now, as you pull this out, you notice a short control cable between the head unit and the main unit. However, in the box, you are provided with a normal main unit bracket for mounting alongside a mount specifically for the head unit. This attaches to the head unit. Well, it's just one thumb screw and that connects on the rear. 
Now you also get five meters of control cable included in the box that goes between the main unit and the head unit. So basically there's no expensive extras just to remote mount the head away from the radio. Okay, so let's talk about some performance testing. First, let's test low power on the VHF band at around 145 megahertz. For this, I'll use my new inline power and SWR meter, and it's reporting just under seven watts here. On the mid-level setting, we observe an output power of around 12 watts. And with the radio set to the highest power setting, this power meter is reporting 19 and a half watts. Now on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, we're seeing around seven watts on low power. And then on mid power, we're seeing around 12.9 watts. And then on high power, we see an output of around 19.2 watts. So it's a little bit off of that specification of 25 watts. I don't think the receiving end would hear any difference with an extra few watts. Okay, so let's take a listen to see how well this transmitted audio sounds. And for this, I'll be using an SDR receiver and recording it on my computer. This is uh, M0 DQW testing, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing audio on the Zustone D500 with the audio set to narrow. M0 DQW, over. This is uh, M0 DQW testing the audio on the Zustone D500 with the audio set to wide. The audio is now set to wide, M0 DQW, over. Now one of the tests that I always like to perform, and while I know this is not using a lab calibrated spectrum analyzer, it's using a cheap China-born Tiny SA Ultra. However, it should still give us a general idea of how well spurious emissions are being filtered. Now my Tiny SA is measuring for the two meter band at around 145 megahertz, but the second harmonic is only minus 36 dB down from the fundamental. Now I believe around minus 45 dB is where we really want to be. So this is not really good, but, it's definitely not the worst that I've seen. Now up on the 70 centimeter band at around 435 megahertz, there appears to be no second or third harmonic, at least above the minus 80 dB noise floor of the tiny SA. However, there is a fourth harmonic registering here and that has a reasonable minus 46 dB. So there we go guys, that's the Zastone D500, a no frills dual band radio for the two and 70 centimeter bands. Now I know what you're thinking, it looks like Zastone have tried to copy the design of the Yaesu FTM200. And well, while it looks similar, it definitely is not the quality of Yaesu. But then again, it's less than a quarter of the price of a Yaesu mobile radio. Plus the menu and firmware is completely different. Anyway guys, that's the Zastone D500. Like I said, a no frills dual band radio. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments. Until next video. I'll see you in the next one.